Croy is considered unredeemingly bad in Melee, and most people have an idea of why. It is part of the reason that his recent success, The Hands of Zane, has made people so hyped. However, Roy's tools are often misunderstood, and they can actually be quite good. In this video, we will be breaking down Roy as a character, in broad terms, his neutral, punish, and recovery. And then we will be looking at how understanding Roy's flaws in Melee enabled Project M to design a more competitive version of Roy. Hey, this is Junebug, and I'm going to use my experience in high-level Melee and PM to make a compelling comparison. Roy's neutral is average, at best. While he has a solid dash dance, almost every single move has more startup and end lag than Mark. Moves like up tilt have considerably more end lag and can't be used to juggle. All of the aerials have more end lag and landing lag. Dash attack is dash attack. But thankfully, while his dash speed and initial dash are average, his dash length and low profile allow him to have a similar ground game to Mark. As such, dash dance with punishing, dash grab, and dash down tilt seem to be very strong as Roy as they are for Mark. Roy's up-close options are actually the best aspect of his play. Traditionally, this is his crouch cancel, down tilt, and grab, all of which can convert Roy's max damage off most characters. Roy's crouch cancel is amazing, as not only does he get the traditional hit stun reduction of CC, his crouch goes extremely low to the ground like Marth. This allows for some fun power shield shenanigans, as it's much easier to land a power shield when a character's hurt box is distorted. You can also down tilt out of crouch. Down tilt is one of the best grounded normals in the game. It is quick, disjointed, breaks ASDI down at zero, and sets up for a fall. Grab will see mainly as a dash dance with punish option, but can also be a decent mix up to throw out, out of dash forward and CC. We can also see side B being useful, as side B can link into the third hit side B, which sets up for edge guards and kills outright. And of course, we have S-Smash, the definition of a high-risk, high-reward option. These extremely strong grounded options, along with the reward he gets for them, is why Roy performs well on a stage like FD, along with his punish, which we'll get to soon. However, Roy is not without flaws in neutral. He's also extremely bad at dealing with CC and a character platformer air camping him. Unlike Marth, who can outspace someone's crouch cancel, act quicker out of moves to avoid shield grab, and shark platform campers, Roy mainly has to rely on waiting to get into a grounded scrap or close quarters option and mixing up somebody's landing with dash dance grabs, down tilts, and side beat. Marth's fair and nair are great spacing tools and options that can be used late. Roy's aerials are bad at scrapping, they can't be spaced, and even up close, they can be shield grab. Roy's fair and nair generally unsafe on ASDI down, CC, and shield. Which is why Roy's aerials generally aren't a huge part of his neutral. Marth's up air, nair, and up tilt provide counterplay to platform camping. For both Roy and Marth, the tipper hitbox on up air has priority. It works out great for Marth, as he can pursue juggle state and extend combos very easily with tipper up air. However, Roy's tipper up air has almost no knockback, making the move unsafe on hit without proper usage. Roy's up tilt has way too much lag and inconsistency to be used as a sharking tool, and Roy's short hop height and fall speed make it hard to cover plats like Marth would with his nair. Marth nair is a great option when characters are maneuvering on side plat. This allows characters to use platforms for him way more. While Roy can attempt to use full hop nair, no impact lands, and side B to threaten platform movement, these are generally low reward. Roy has to read his opponent far in advance in order to deal with platform camping and jumping around his grounded ranges. And this is why he'll struggle on a stage like Dreamland. How do you deal with someone camping plat when your character has bad mobility and air to airs? Well, we already know the answer to that. Just watch any Ice Climber set where they get camped out as Sopo because it's depressingly similar to the counterplay versus Roy. And hell, Sopo has a functional up there. Let's go to the punish. Bear with me guys, because this might be hard, and feel free to slow this part down. Punish game in melee varies based on percent, fall speed, and weight. While this might be a slight generalization on the cast and gameplay, we're gonna need to break down how Roy's combo game works. We're gonna break it down into combos on fast fallers, middleweights, and floaties, as well as low percent, mid percent, and high percent. We can also make moves either combo starters, like down tilt, combo extenders, like his aerials, or combo enders, like his smashes. At 
low percent down tilt continues to be one of the best moves in the game. On fast fallers and semi fast fallers, a down tilt can lead to a grab or an early DI mix up with F smash at lower percents. On most floaties, all you get is down tilt aerial or down tilt neutral beat. At mid percents, down tilt into grab or platform tech chase is still very solid versus fast fallers. Versus middleweights, an aerial and juggle state is the preferred combo method. Versus floaties, however, down tilt won't lead to much at mid percents besides maybe an aerial or juggle state. At high percent, down tilt is still useful as a combo tool versus fast fallers, and sets up juggle state on the other characters. We have to talk about grab 2, a combo starter which is another one of Roy's strongest tools. After a grab, tech chases and chain grabs on fast fallers, middleweights, and floaties allow for pretty solid punishes at the low to mid percents. Low percents on fast fallers allow for a DI mix up with F smash, but realistically you should never hold out at these low percents versus Roy. Smash DIing up mitigates a lot of the early F smash mix ups. Fast fallers will get up throw chain grab and tech chase under platforms at mid percents. Up smash and up tilt can be used to extend combos here, but can be inconsistent due to their end leg. Roy can cover under the plat for a juggle with up smash, and he can also go up and start tech chase on the plat itself. He can get a re-grab, and in some cases, he can delete somebody's stock with an F smash on a tech re. Middleweights get tech chased by forward throw and down throw, and chain grab their F smash on a DIA. Heavy floaties and floaties work slightly different. Lighter floaties can get re-grabbed at lower percents, but ultimately aren't comboed too much off grab. Versus heavy floaties, you have to rely on reading the options they choose after in the slight advantage state you get. Aerial combo extensions are where things get wonky. At low percents, Nair is the most useful due to it having the most base knockback of his aerials. Otherwise, if you want to risk staggering your combo, you could use up air or fair gamble on them punishing you on hit. And it's not like Nair isn't a gamble either. You can smash DI the first hit up to get out. As always, an early F smash after the aerial isn't bad here as a mix up. At mid percents versus fast fallers, you can extend your combo into a grab down tilt and as always F smash. And at mid percents versus middleweights and floaties, fair strings can set up a juggle state or combo. Juggle state is not great for Roy. Whereas Marth can juggle with fair and up air extremely easily, Roy cannot. Roy struggles to keep his opponents juggled and often has to read their options coming down after an aerial rather than using an aerial to continue juggle state. When are they jumping? Are they coming down with an aerial? Are they air dodging? In essence, Roy has to outplay his opponents multiple time for his juggle states, as opposed to the one win a character like Marth or any higher tier character would have to do to set up for their kill. There's an insane DI mix-up with Marth combos, as you never know when he's going to mix up your DI with a move that sends outward. Is he going to continue the combo, or is he going to F-smash me? Is he going to fair me, up air me, or up B? With Roy, it's slightly different. The combo moves are so easily combo broken that holding up and sometimes in is almost encouraged, so you either get the counter hit or a max DI on F smash. Once your opponent is at high percent, his normally low knockback aerials actually have enough hit stun to be threatening versus fast fallers. This doesn't matter as much because the opponent is already past 100%, but they do start to work. So by the time Roy's punish game starts to become threatening on hit, the opponent is well past combo percent and a point where other characters would be focused on getting the kills. Roy's weird punish game makes him almost anti-meta. While his combo game on fast fallers can be quite strong, and he can go for early DI mix ups with F smash on most of the cast, his lack of ability to combo and confirm kills on middleweights, and especially floaties at higher percents, severely hurts him. Roy is either killing them at 60% or 200%. Roy Raitis confirmed. There's some combo trees I may have missed in here, so feel free to experiment with Roy's stuff. He's super interesting. Punishing Roy is quite easy, as he's a semi-fast faller. This fall speed makes him combo fodder. For example, Marth can up throw Roy and up tilt him at very low percents, whereas he'd need to rack up more damage on spaces to set up that juicy combo. He's chain grab fodder for characters like Sheik, or Falcon, or Ganon, a slight difference in fall speed usually means he gets punished much harder than Marth. Roy's recovery is weird. Marth falls slower so he can mix up when he gets to ledge easier. Roy falls so fast that it's hard to get the same level of mix up when going to ledge or stage. While Marth has more time for mix ups in his recovery, Roy gets one or two before he's forced to pull the trigger. 
The multi-hit aspect of up B can be useful at times. When Roy is close to ledge, there's a longer period of hitboxes being out, meaning timing invincibility can be tricky. However, there's also the question of reversals. Getting hit by a Marth recovery can translate to Marth getting a stop. Troyed with a Roy recovery often means you're sent high up into the air. This, coupled with Roy's lack of ability to capitalize off juggle state, means most of the time you're getting away from free. It also incentivizes throwing out lingering hitboxes near ledge. And even if he does hit his up B in trade, it's not a horrible position. Up B doesn't always link into all of the hits, too. If a character DI's out of up B, they can get a reversal on Roy's recovery. Theoretically, edge guarding as Roy can be extremely rewarding if you get one hit. Like Marth, his counter leads to a kill on a spacey with a high enough knockback where it may not require a follow up. A charged Flare Blade or F-Smash can easily send characters way too far to recover for recoveries that make it to stage. However, he cannot go out with aerials as easily, besides the occasional Flare Blade, and is forced to get somewhat creative when dealing with sweet spots and longer lasting recoveries. And versus high recoveries, he has to read them far, far in advance in order to have any chance. Roy will generally hold stage and ledge trap, rather than risk an offstage play. Oh yeah, we didn't mention how he edge guards floaties. He doesn't. He can contest certain spots, but the risk reward for missing an edge guard is so bad. So we've established a variety of factors showing how Roy works in melee. A brief recap. Roy's neutral is based around a strong grounded game, as he struggles with platform movement and air to airs. He gets a good punish at low percents with tech chases and pop-ups, which stays consistent versus fast fallers, but quickly fall off, especially versus floaty characters. Roy gets comboed hard. His recovery, while it can be tricky to the multi-hit, is strictly worse than Marth due to his rapid fall speed. His edge guarding, while it does have high reward versus certain members of the cast, the majority of casts does not feel threatened when they're off to stage versus Roy. So, if Roy sucks, how did Zane do well with Roy? Several videos already talk about this and I'd recommend checking them out. Basically, it's no secret that Zane is one of the best players in the world. Part of that is his understanding of advantage state and punish game, which we will discuss in detail in an upcoming episode of Good Players. And part of it is the ability to use Roy's tools in a similar ways that he can use Marth's. He can edge cancel, but is more likely to wet noodle. He can dash dance grab and use down tilt in neutral, but they are less strong than Marth's. He can read people's movement options with pivot F smash, Wait, this one might actually be better. In essence, the tools can be used similarly, but they're weaker. And then there's the issue of his opponents playing at ranges that they would against Marth. There's no point fearing platform sharking versus Roy, as his hitboxes are quite weak. In order to beat Roy, you can't scrap with him. You have to camp him. What does Zane think about all this? Roy is a dog shit character because he's really bad. See, he agrees. In order to correctly tweak a character, you have to understand their flaws. The Project M development team knew many of Roy's flaws. With the help of Roy fanboys like Sethlon and Lunchables, Roy was given a significant rework to his neutral punish and recovery. First, the team fixed his frame data. While his ground mobility is still slower than Marth's, his moves now have less in lag and enough knockback that they can combo into each other at lower percents and not get punished for landing them. His aerials can be used to pressure and control space, like Marth's in Melee. His dash tech isn't melee dash tech. His up tilt was reworked, and he has a side B with way more utility. Project Nexus has made a video explaining the changes to Roy's side B, and I recommend checking it out. He still maintains the same base game plan in neutral, which is revolving around down tilt, dash dance, and grab. However, if somebody takes to platform, he now has better ability to deal with them. Up tilt now covers both sides of him and can be used under platforms to pressure, as Marth would at melee. He has melee Marth's Nair with more active frames, allowing him to reliably cover movement on side platforms. The additional knockback given to up air allows him to accurately challenge movement, and bear is now a kill move, so air camping Roy isn't as useful. All these changes allow Roy to be played much more aggressively and control the pace of the match unlike poor melee run. Roy's combo game was improved significantly. Down tilt and grab were pretty much the same as melee. However, the main difference came in his air-air combo game. As a general rule, all of Roy's aerials and PM have received more damage and base knockback, allowing him to stay safe on hit even at low percents versus heavier characters. Up air links into itself with little issue as opposed to up airs in melee, which require insane precision. PM dare is completely reworked, with every hitbox being important, specifically as a kill confirm versus floaties. He also now has a DI mix-up in the air with bear, 
Bear has a high amount of knockback, allowing for kill confirms off of aerial chuggles, and can be mixed in among up air strings, fair strings, and down tilts. Roy doesn't have to fish for F smash or high percent grab to get the kill, it indirectly buffs his neutral as well. Roy's recovery is generally worse than a lot of the Project M cast. It is stronger than his melee counterpart. Significant changes include a better ledge grab box, more hang time on up B, and a longer distance. PM Roy's edge guarding is infinitely better than his melee counterpart, and it's due to both a better recovery and a stronger, more useful normals to use off stage. The recovery buff lets him go deeper to swat with Aerios, and in particular lets him do drop zone flare blade, which is stronger than melee, and recover with a somewhat generous window. He can rising dare to either spike, edge guard, or set up for a combo. This isn't to say that Roy has some of the best edge guarding in PM, as it's still likely average mostly due to the environment of PM. These buffs allow Roy to recover much longer and kill much easier, but PM Roy isn't perfect. He still has the same average run speed and mobility in a game with even more fast and obscure characters. His matchup spread can be volatile due to his inherent flaw versus heavy and floaty characters that we've known since Melee. He's not a top tier in PM, but he's a complete package with some whipped cream on the top for anyone who's a fan of Melee Roy. It's always interesting to see top players take melee low tiers, who are flawed in a lot of ways far. It's also interesting to consider how they function in the meta and how their flaws can be mitigated. While Roy is extremely flawed, his kit is unique in that it can be useful versus the fast fallers in the meta and almost non-existent versus floaties. And by understanding Roy's weaknesses, Project M was able to tweak Roy to more suitably combat the entire cast. By understanding the design of characters, one can hope to take the competitive play of Smash Brothers to new levels. This has been Junebug, and yes, I was every single one of the Roys you guys have been playing in unranked. You're welcome. Dinkleberg. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing to this YouTube. Also, we just launched our Patreon. Any supporter amount is welcome if you enjoy the content. Till next time, peace.